Do you condemn armed Palestinian resistance? It's a tricky question, and the answer is, wait. Hello, people. This is Socrates San. Today, I will be responding to Propaganda and Co. Who is Propaganda and Co? You might ask. So he's a pro-Palestinian activist, YouTuber, who brings in his channel the likes of Daniel Hachihachu, a washout Islamist that believes Islam should impose itself to the world through offensive jihad. Suleiman Ahmed, one of the pro-Palestinian lunatics on Twitter. Jack- Jackson Hinkle, an anti-Western bigot that calls himself an American patriot. Although he sides with Russia, Iran, and Hezbollah <laughs> against the America, and also hear these people, and he believes this about Nick Fuentes. So I want to ask you um, some more questions about Fuentes, America First. So F- Fuentes has been contributing, you could say, to the Palestinian movement through his criticism of the state of Israel and the influence of the Zionist lobby in the United States. At the same time, though, people would look at Fuentes you know, and say, maybe we shouldn't be getting too close to someone like Fuentes because we don't know actually if this person is anti-Semitic. I'm not saying that he is. I'm still learning about him. And I like a lot of his views and I think he's a passionate speaker. And So you don't have the intellect, you don't have the intellectual capacity to say that Nick Fuentes is anti-Semitic. But you want people to believe the other things you say. So you don't have the capacity to even say that Nick Fuentes is anti-Semitic. I mean, guys, it's like saying, I I cannot say whether Hitler is anti-Semitic. So let's see some Nick Fuentes. They're doing it in Congress with the Department of Education. You're not allowed to say, for example, that Jews killed Jesus Christ. We all know they did. They are evildoers. They are people that worship false gods. They are people that practice magic or rituals or whatever. And more than anything, those people need to be, when we take power, they need to be given the death penalty. Straight up. And... So Propaganda and Co. values their opinion and feels sympathize with these people. Okay, so now let's see how this, this person that okay, has these sympathies, what has to say about uh, a very important issue. It's a tricky question, and the answer is... Wait, before I answer that, let's talk some history. First up, the story of America's first terrorist, John Brown, a devout and fierce abolitionist. John Brown wrecked havoc in the pre-Civil War American South. In 1859, Brown and 18 men seized a U.S. military arsenal at Harpers Ferry in Virginia with the intent to disperse the weapons to black men with the hopes of waging a guerrilla war against the institution of slavery in America. During his attack, Brown and his men killed several people. His uprising was short-lived, however, as he was shortly captured captured, tried, and sentenced to death. But during his sentencing, Brown told the court that his actions against slavery were consistent with God's commandments. I believe, he said in a speech that electrified many Northerners who later read it, that to have interfered as I have done on behalf of his despised poor is not wrong, but right. Now, if it is deemed necessary that I should forfeit my life for the furtherance of the ends of justice and mingle my blood with the blood of millions in this slave country whose rights are disregarded by wicked, cruel, and unjust enactments, I say, let it be done. So this guy who cannot even know whether Nick Fuentes is anti-Semitic and also calls in his show Daniel Hakikatsu who thinks that uh, Sharia should be imposed to the rest of the world with offensive jihad. Now, he deems that uh, Hamas are doing what they are doing because they are, according to him, freedom fighters fighting for human rights. Okay, now let's see what Hamas say about themselves, what they say, why they are doing what they are doing. You will see that... um they aim for the destruction of Israel. 
And they say here in Article 7 of the Charter, if the links have been distant from each other and if obstacles placed by those who are the lackeys of Zionism in the way of the fight is obstructed the continuation of the struggle, the Islamic resistance movement aspires to the realization of Allah's promise, no matter how long that should take. And what is this promise? Let's see. The Prophet, Allah bless him and grant him salvation, has said, the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims fight the Jews. When the Jew will, be, will hide behind stones and trees, the stones and trees will say, O Muslim, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. Only the Karkat tree will not do that because it is one of the trees of the Jews. <clears throat> and it's directly taken from Muhammad's <clears throat> words. The slogan of the Islamic resistance movement, Article 8, Allah is its target, the Prophet is its model, the Quran is its constitution, jihad is its path, and death for the sake of Allah is the loftiest of its wishes. Yes, you definitely want to form a big giant state with tons of people who believe that death for the sake of Allah is the loftiest of your wishes. Hamas came from the Muslim Brotherhood. So they have the Muslim Brotherhood ideology that seeks to create a caliphate and with jihad and dawah replace the Western world order with the Islamic world order. Remind you, Al-Qaeda and ISIS have the, came from the Muslim Brotherhood. So Hamas, Al-Qaeda and ISIS came from the same source. So saying Hamas are like the abolitionists is exactly like saying Al-Qaeda and ISIS are like the abolitionists. They are freedom fighters. <laughs> they seek their human rights. Totally absurd. I went to the Nova exhibit and saw new footage. I already knew it was religiously motivated, but I underestimated how religious it was. Guys. It's so much worse than I thought. I was watching a ritual, like the human sacrifice of some ancient tribe, like Apocalypto. I thought human sacrifice religions were gone and in the past, but no, that's exactly what Hamas is. Before they invaded, they hyped themselves up by chanting, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet, over and over. It wasn't just a few Allahu Akbars. It was incessant prayers and chanting the entire time. It was non-stop, like this was a holy day and they were at church. They would scream in the name of Allah right before bombing a car. Don't look away. You need to understand what is happening and what we are dealing with here. In the name of Allah, we conquer. Watch. For Northerners and African Americans, Brown was a Christ-like martyr, a hero. But for Southerners, he was a terrorist. And yet these same Southerners could not acknowledge the terror they had inflicted on their slaves for as long as their country had existed. For centuries, black slaves were tortured, tarred and feathered, humiliated, dehumanized, exploited, beaten, raped, and killed at the hands of slave owners. But in the minds of the slave owners, their actions were justified. The so-called Palestinian Liberation Movement was always a militant movement to exterminate Israel. It was never for a two-state solution or Palestinian rights. Yet, Propaganda and Co. misinforms its viewers, his viewers by making a false analogy with the abolitionist, abolitionist movement. Black people in America didn't seek to take over the country and exterminate the whites. They were human rights activists, not jihadists. And that is what the pro-Palestinian side does. They use humanitarian arguments to cover their imperialistic political agenda. That is the definition of propaganda. And they will keep doing it as long as there are the useful idiots from the radical left that buy this propaganda. How do we get to a solution? 
So I think that we have to not talk about Arabs as though they're somehow constitutionally different than Danes. I don't know why we would essentialize populations in that way. We have to be open to the idea the Danes don't that the do October people... Seventh. Wait a minute. Muslims, Muslims didn't do October 7th. Not Gazans, since the Vikings. Gazans didn't do October 7th. And if you're, if you're adopting the, the, the world view that everyone in Gaza, 2.3 million people, are responsible, then you are very much in line That's with Netanyahu's right wing government, That's who thinks that and therefore thinks it's appropriate to violate international law by doing collective punishment on the population, literally starving them to death, Fine. having them on the brink no, of famine, okay. killing 13,000 kids. There was a very passionate description of How the many graphic reality of Brianna, October 7th at the beginning. Of this. The you're, answer is. You're not answering quick, my question. Quick, I'll answer the question. No, I'm sorry, I, I do feel like a, a lot of. Responses. 20 more seconds. Okay. 20 more seconds. The solution, please. Go. So there has to be a one state solution, which means that there cannot. When people, when um, Hamas is talking about eliminating um, Israel, it's a talking about el not killing all of the Jews. It's about eliminating the idea. <laughs> okay. It's about. Leave it there. Leave it there. We'll leave it there. It's Ryan, about, we'll leave it there. It's about, it's about, uh, let me just finish, sir. Can I just finish the sentence? It's about eliminating I, the idea of a Jewish state. Ending a Jewish state, ending an ethno-national state, and having a state more like what we have in the United States of America. If, if I okay. The radical left, like Islamists, are radical ideologues. That means they have a bad connection with reality because they interpret the world through their dogma, not through evidence. This is what ideologues do. They try to fit reality to their worldview instead of informing the worldview from reality. So, Brianna, this uh, lady, in her ideology, Hamas are freedom fighters, like the abolitionists. So, obviously, once they have equal rights, okay, in Israel, in, a st in one state solution, they will live side by side in peace with Israelis. Because that is what the, her ideology says. Yet, whoever knows anything about this issue, th this claim is laughable. Okay, like the the other guy who started laughing. It's laughable. It's um, I mean, insane. <laughs> And they used religion and all sorts of perverted logic to sanitize their deranged worldview. But history knows otherwise. And more than 200 years later, John Brown, America's first terrorist, is celebrated by the American government. And he wouldn't be the only resistance fighter the world would celebrate. Let's not forget Nelson Mandela, a South African hero and Nobel Peace Prize winner, the global symbol of peace and freedom, immortalized for his struggle to end South African apartheid. He too was at one time considered a terrorist. What? Why? As part of the African National Congress, Mandela resisted South African apartheid peacefully through nonviolent protests, strikes, and boycotts. But in 1960, South African police murdered 69 protesters and declared the ANC illegal. Left with no other options and forced underground, Mandela and the ANC had no choice but to resort to armed resistance in order to achieve their liberation. Nelson Mandela. Blah, 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 false analogy. For an arm resistance to be legitimate, it must have a legitimate cause. Exterminating Israel for the cause of Allah in this world is not a legitimate cause. Legitimate armed resistance is not targeting civilians, especially not targeting women and children, raping, torturing, etc. Okay, so Hamas is a terrorist group, not an armed resistance. That much is absolutely clear. But now look um, how Norman Filkerstein, who made the same argument, was uh, destroyed by a very, a very good argument of um, what was his name, the lawyer. Uh, okay, let's see. However, the abolitionists did not condemn the perpetrators, the abolitionists kept saying, we told you so, we told you so, we told you so. If you treat people like that, what happened with the slave revolt inevitably would happen. And I say, if you lock two million people in a concentration camp for 20 years, half of whom are children, 
who were born into that concentration camp don't react with shock and dismay and disbelief and indignation at what happened on October 7th. I have well, spent I the last react. 20 I, years, I, I have spent the last 20 years of my life studying what's been done to the people lying. of Gaza. And each time I reread what I wrote, I'm more, more firm than ever before. I will not condemn those people, even as I acknowledge that massive, unspeakable atrocities occurred on October 7th. Okay, Alan Dershowitz, your, let, your let final response. Let me have my last point. Norman Finkelstein, you would not condemn the Nazis, Hitler, Goebbels, and Goering, because they, too, went through suffering after the end of the First World War. They, too, tried to justify what they did as inevitable because of the inflation, because of living under terrible conditions. They inevitably voted for Adolf Hitler. They inevitably built gas chambers. They inevitably built concentration camps. And you, Norman Finkelstein, who claim your parents are Holocaust survivors, you, Norman Finkelstein, by your logic, would justify every single one of the six billion Jews who were murdered because the Germans who did it don't deserve condemnation because they were victims of the Versailles Treaty at the end of the World War I. That's the situation you're in, Norman Finkelstein. It's despicable. Okay. Uh, well, we, well, we started, uh, I think, in a reasonable shape, and we ended in a place where the final word is despicable, which is a shame, but I understand that passions run high. Did you catch this argument? Okay, that was a Rua Matt argument. Okay, take it and go home. You can go home now. Okay, he... He, uh, he annihilated. Th this was the end of the career of Norman Finkelstein. Okay, this, this, what I've shown you now, was the gravestone of, of his career. Okay. Okay. Which brings us to the plight of the Palestinians. Now, we all know the story, and if we don't, don't worry, I'm going to tell you. In 1948, armed Zionist paramilitary groups violently ethnically cleansed Palestinian villages and laid the groundwork for the state of Israel. They killed, raped, and tortured Palestinians. This isn't my characterization of their actions, it's theirs. Just listen to the accounts of these former Zionist militants from 1948. Okay, it's because we all know the story, except you apparently. The, okay, you know the story, but you are a liar, propagandist, and a pathetic fool. Okay, in 1948 was when Israel accepted the partition and made a state and was attacked by all the Arab states to eliminate Israel. So how dare you? How dare you, you idiot? You pathetic weakling. Okay, guys, these, these people that lie, okay, I could, uh, like that, are pathetic weakling. I couldn't imagine myself doing that. Okay. So this idiot knows the story, but he chooses to leave out. And wait just a moment. Israel then accepted the partition. They made a state, and Arabs attacked them to genocide. Israel, just after they escaped the Holocaust. So you leave this detail out. That No, in fact, the, the Arabs attack Israel. How dare you, my friend? And you start your... And you start, you start your speech by saying, uh, we all know the story. Should I make the, gest the gesture? Okay, guys, so... Propaganda and co. <laughs> Have a good night. Continue. Continue the research. <laughs> Continue the research, my friend. You are just another pro-Palestinian activist. Okay, guys, so I found a folder, an, I don't know, a month ago, <laughs> with old songs that I made, and every, at the last of every video I make, I put one and I pretend to sing, something like that. Thank you. This 
δύσκολα περνάνε οι στιγμές Εσύ έχεις φύγει και ο χρόνος με πνίγει Και κάτι με κρατάει στο χθες Έρωτα είναι θαρό κι ολοκλές Κι ολοκλές καρδιά Μύγουν μόνο οι ψυχές Εμείς, εμείς Θα βρούμε έναν τρόπο σου λέω Να ζούμε καλά σαν και σένα κανείς Δεν έχει αγγίξει ποτέ τη δική μου καρδιά Μόνο εμείς, εμείς Θα βρούμε έναν τρόπο να ξέρω Smoking too much. 